Hey guys, Will Sebastian here, Pro Naughty Asset Trader and co-founder of The Trading Mentor. Don't forget, you can join my private trading room. We'll be live for the New York session later on. Get that underneath. So, New Zealand dollar dollar. I've picked this chart because it's the only thing that's really considerably moved um, as of late and today. If you look at your watch list or wherever you want to view your assets, um, TradingView is a good platform to do that. You just add them all on the right. Uh, you can see it's all near the nils. Apart from oil, uh, New Zealand dollar has probably got the most movement as an FX play. Um, and that comes really uh, due to the rhetoric around the New Zealand dollar. So let's take the most recent price action. You can see from the 13th of February, okay, this month, um, to the 19th, six days, you have gone straight up. Now, what's interesting about this, especially um, from my perspective as a mainly a price action trader um is that you've had you've got a repeat and i'm doing a similar thing across uh, various other assets uh, particularly your us pairs because they're ranging they're ranging because you don't have this clear bias against the dollar there's still dollar strength and markets are just deciding where they want to go and that's why markets have been so painfully slow as many of my members will know and moan about it a bit um been so painfully slow for so long you can see we're stuck between 0.615 and 0.605 okay 100 pips or so um just nothingness and like i said it's because the market is deciding okay well is the new zealand dollar going to compete and get slightly higher or are we going to get this persistent us dollar strength after recent fed comments on inflation inflation's a bit sticky I don't think the Fed is too ready to drop those rates. That's why you're getting it sustained. New Zealand um, saying a similar thing, really, and other economies as well. So that's why you're getting this really, really sideways uh, movement. So it's really, it becomes a little bit easier to plan ahead, uh, therefore. I mean, you started doing this range uh, back in Jan, I believe, and you've come like this, all right? It's quite basic. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, like I always say, your midpoint provides a little bit of a bounce. On current market sentiment, if it remains the same, you know, it's likely you'll see something like that. I prefer it short where it is. And again, it's all about probability analysis. It's about looking at charts and understanding where does the probability lie with my decision. And the probability is always going to lie where you've seen the same thing happen before. Okay, that's what trading is about. The only way you can determine what is a good or a bad price for entry is based on previous price action. That's why price action is a thing. That's why price action is so important, especially for myself. And that's why you really need to use it. Because if you're just buying and selling willy-nilly, you'll have no idea. Now, if it does become the case that uh, the Fed suddenly breaks out and says, you know what? Um, we're going to uh, start easing quicker than we thought for some reason. You'll have to wait for key data for that. You may find you get up here and then you contend with this. I should think that's going to be your next layer of key price action. Again, remember what I was saying. You're looking for these short areas uh, of value based on probability. And again, that's where you've got it. Because if you look to the left hand side, you can clearly see that, that there's price rejection formally there. Okay, you can see that because you can see all the candle wicks. Okay, now again, depending on the way things go for the Fed, you'll either see it up there or a pullback to here. Okay, and then of course, this becomes your new long zone because you would be at new support. And again, the probability would be with you. You just need to bear in mind market sentiment at the time, should it favor the New Zealand dollar or the US dollar, which of course we'll find out at that point. Okay, Antipodeans, Ord and New Zealand basically against US dollar have sloped a lot in the very long run, steeper than uh, European uh, currencies. As you can see from 2014, you have gone very, very quickly to the downside. So significant retracement within a changing Fed wouldn't surprise me if they change their rates quicker than the New Zealand, uh, the RBNZ does. Uh, you may find a further retracement in a shorter period of time. If it does become the case that even still, once all economies are dropping their rates anyway, and um, that the US dollar outperforms the New Zealand dollar, then you should probably look higher near your high key MAs for a long term investor short, which would continue you on this downwards trajectory. 
And of course, if it doesn't occur there, you can scale in to the upside should you get higher. So that would be, and if you pull a fib out, that's going to be around 61.8 and then 88.6. So key technical areas and key value zones for long-term future shorts. But again, you need market sentiment to inflow in the market for you to get anything like that um, in the near or long term. And it's just not there at the moment. At the moment, what you're seeing is weakness and a persistent US dollar and therefore um, considerable sideways movement. So on the face of it, near term, I like it short. Um, if I was going to buy, given that you've got that long-term market sentiment <coughs> dragging you down, dollar outperforming various currencies, um, you may find you end up near uh, 0.6. And then in the long term, you could reflect off, and again, it comes right back into what I was saying, you could reflect off long-term probability analysis, which refers to the likelihood of a bounce at any price point, okay, based on that, and based on that, because those are your areas of rejection, and thus, those are the areas where traders have formally got long, and they may intend to rebuy, just like they did at various areas there, and throughout history, if you scroll back far enough. So those are your long zones. So my overall bias, in the near term, I wouldn't be entirely shocked if you either get rejection here, or you push slightly higher and get it nearer to your 0.62. Wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if it's the latter. So just be careful if you're going to start scaling in short now because that can always occur quite easily should uh, you get changes across the wires within this week's news. You've got a few news events coming up. I can just relay those uh, now. So today we're on Monday the 19th. And if you're planning ahead this week, today, uh, Monday is a boring Monday. Uh, really not a lot going on, unfortunately. I really don't like days where not much happens, um, but that's how it goes, I guess. Uh, if you go into tomorrow, you've got a bit of CAD news, um, and then you, you're really not looking at anything enormously significant just yet. I would think you, you know, you're going to have to wait a minute. I don't think particularly it will come tomorrow, um, maybe Wednesday. But keep an eye on sentiment in regards to the New Zealand dollar and the US dollar because they are going to dictate the long-term movement, specifically the actions of the central bank and how that refers to the distribution of money or cash in, in those uh, respective economies. Uh, we go over this every day with our full trading entries and exits. We're uh, pro multi asset day traders, myself and my partner. Uh, we teach live on charts every day. If you want that course, just click underneath. The link is right there for my free training. See you soon.